All right, and we are recording today. I'm with Lior Grebler. How are you, Lior? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm I'm caffeinated. It's late, but I just I just finished uh, like my third espresso of the evening, so I'm I'm ready to go. I'm You're charged to up. To you. You're charged you know, up. Yeah, I'm excited too. We always get into trouble whenever we start talking, so I, we have to be careful. I think. Uh, yeah, we better not miss our flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have some stories to share. So just so I just so people have a bit of context. So, um, you know, if you're expecting like kind of the usual Bitcoin episode, uh, this might not be it. Uh, but this one's going to be a little bit more. It's going to be interesting. Uh, so Leo and I, we've known each other for ooh, maybe way too long. Like uh, what? When did you join? Uh, 2009. When? 2009. Holy cow. First that's time, Okay, so 10 years. Yeah. First time I met you. So you actually were interviewing me you were part of the interview I you actually yes. had to say on whether or not i i got you got hired got right so i i don't yeah. talk a lot about those days you know uh <laughs> just because i don't like connect with a lot of people from those days that much but uh so a lot of people don't know but people maybe people do but i used to work for a company called kwanzer kwanzer question and answer we'll never forget that uh a company called kwanzer a robotics and mechatronics company based out of uh canada for from oh my god seven eight years maybe eight and a half and so i think halfway maybe through my tenure there i i uh uh lior came on board and uh and, and stole my job i, t- I took I took over your territory. Like, you took uh, over my territory. Uh, it was yeah. like a baton passing ceremony. No, no, no. Uh, it was more than that. It was it was a full road trip. So 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 nine years ago, no, ten years ago. Yeah. Ten? Is it ten? No, what is it now? Well, oh my god, 12, it's way more. It's like twelve years. Okay, that's a long time. Ago. Um, so. The first thing I usually kind of like to start with is, you know, what's your story? And it's not like, you know, 30 second elevator pitch version. It's more like, you know, even if we don't get past, you know, whatever, 2015, 2016, it's okay. But the goal is what's your story? Some people start with like, you know, uh, three generations ago. Some people start with their first job. I mean, it's up to you, man, wherever you want to take us. Uh, Okay. I'm originally from Ottawa. Uh, and the youngest of four, I, I grew up in Ottawa. I went to university in Ottawa. I took several victory laps in order to get my aerospace engineering degree. And I only finished because I promised never to go near an airplane. Um, then I moved to Toronto. I followed my, uh, my girlfriend at the time who became my, my fiance and then wife and still my wife. So it seemed to be a worthwhile move. Um, I worked for uh, a number of startups and uh, uh, doing, you know, initially sales um, and then uh, worked for, for IBM and eventually, you know, ended up uh, at Quantzer. And uh, I, th- I think that's where, you know, I'd been. Wait, did you, what did you say you studied? You said, or did you say? Aerospace. Like, were you talking yeah, about aeros- aeros- aerospace? Yeah. So you're very technical. Okay. So you, wait, so what, what made you switch gears from, I guess, uh, aerospace to like sales? Because you said your IBM job was uh, in S- sales, sales, right? Yeah, I was awful at, at engineering. I only went into aerospace engineering exactly to get the type of reaction that people would have when you tell them that you went into <laughs> aerospace engineering. <laughs> it was like, wow, oh my goodness, you must be so smart. And then I tell them like, it's a four-year degree and I took it in six and a half years <laughs> and I t- at Carleton where the case stands for quality. Like it's, it's, it's a whole- You're the dumbest smart guy <laughs> I have the- in the room. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, we're talking about Carlton as a school. It's not. It's not even. Not even among the the, the smartest guys. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so that's cool though. Aerospace. I mean. I mean. It, I mean that seems like isn't that going to be the next frontier? I mean, everyone's oh, going there now. Bezos is like retiring to just focus on that. Elon yeah, is. I, I love to draw airplanes in high school, and I love to color rockets. And I, I, but I had that. That's pretty much where my technical capability ended. (laughs) (laughs) Understood. Understood. I spent a lot of time doodling in class as opposed to actually learning the material. So it was it was a frustrating experience. And in fact, during my uh, during my time, one of the the classes that I took, I, I had two courses in control systems. And I ended up taking them a total of five times. And um, this came back later to where, where our story actually uh, connected because it was uh, it, it, it was Quantzer that actually uh, like sold teaching and research equipment to universities around the exact 
course that I had done horribly in. And, uh, and yeah, so it was, it was, it was kind of, uh, all these little things kind of connect back together. But, you know, after, after school, I kind of got interested in business and I, I tried to get into the, uh, to, into an MBA program. I did the GMAT, like I, I did okay. And I actually became a, like a teacher for Kaplan on the side wow. for, for, for doing, uh, uh, for, for doing a GMAT. And actually I didn't, I didn't, I did okay. I didn't do great on the test, but I didn't, I, I was much better at doing the instruction than others. So I ended up teaching, teaching the, the course. But did you ever um, do your MBA? No, I never did my MBA. No, never. I, I, I lost interest after a while seeing, <laughs> seeing what other people were doing uh, as part of their MBAs where it ended up being, you know, it's fun, you know, maybe you could be on The Apprentice, which was big at, you know, back then. Now, probably nobody will watch it, but. Um, what was that I, like though, doing sales at uh, IBM? <laughs> It was, it was, so IBM was only, you do, when, you, again, another one of those things where it sounds impressive, but it's actually not at all. Um, I was doing inside sales. So I was doing lead generation um, for small and medium sized businesses to uh, south, Southern Ohio and Northern Kentucky. Um, and it was, it was awful. It was, it was basically, you know, calling into, pig farms and trying to sell them on web sphere servers that would cost you know a hundred thousand dollars per processor core and you needed to have like six licenses in order to run anything it was it's kind of this like ridiculous like ridiculous experience and it was kind of back, like being back in elementary school even the way that it was organized it was it was you worked in this pod you were dialing and um maybe at one time they, they would dangle this idea of something called a reg ticket where you know you were all temporary and if if you if you ended up performing well you would you'd become a regular employee at IBM it was it was kind of this Kafka Kafka like experience but but part of it was a tons of cold calling and actually that's what I did right out of school I would just did lead generation so um, I went to work for for one startup in Ottawa um, that was selling a PowerPoint conversion tool, like convert PowerPoints to Java apps for like, and then you could, you could, they, they were selling another thing to actually like display presentations from your BlackBerry. Like you could plug your BlackBerry into a, uh, into a, into a, a pr projector. And so I was doing cold calling for them. And then afterwards I moved to another startup that, that uh, um, was selling through Rogers before there was the iPhone, there was this uh, uh, mobile forms on an HP iPack that you could, so they had a Rogers service. And, and I saw them go from, you know, in three months that I was the, the the th three months from when I started, I start, they started at 75 people, they went to 150 people. And then, um, you know, three months after that, they went back to like 10 people. It was, it was just like a, this rocket ship that ended up like exploding, um, you know, shortly afterwards. And then I ended up at IBM. And then after IBM, there was the big uh, downturn where, um, and I ended up looking for work. And that's when I found Quanser. So I, I ended up doing sales there, but that, that experience, um, you know, all the time was kind of looking, you know, Quanzer especially, it was, I have to go back and just talk about it. It was a dream job. First of all, extremely smart people. It was the opportunity to like go around the US, Canada, like all over the world and visit cutting edge research labs, getting to see like what was happening there. And like, again, really smart, really smart people and kind of visiting all of these labs. And you must have experienced this too. I don't know, but like, it was always like, uh, you know, the whole idea of like being influenced by the people, you know, the, the people you surround yourself with the most. And it was like there we were surrounding ourselves with people who were working on like stuff that was 10, 15 years plus out, like people who were who were like in robotics and haptics and unmanned vehicles and all, all of like all that crazy stuff. And it, you couldn't help but think about what was going to be happening in the future. Like it kept on gnawing at you. So um, like everywhere you go, like every every thing that you you were you were tr you're trying to sell stuff that was supposed to influence the students of the future and and like that that you know combined with a lot of other um you know a lot of other kind of ideas that i had to help me start thinking about what was happening in long term you know long term before that i've been doing a lot of other things on the side like i had i had tried all sorts of ventures um i tried uh um you know i, I tried doing real estate and I think I was in real estate at the time that that we had, you know, we had talked. I was I bought a bunch of properties in Hamilton. Um, for those of 
people can look up Hamilton, but uh, it's yeah. Even what, what, by, one of my yeah. I was gonna say one of my early memories of when I first met you was well that interview that you talked about right um, was we were kind of going through the process. We had interviewed a whole bunch of people. Um, but there was something about your like your presentation and your presentation oh, yeah. style that to this day I think about and I probably utilize, you know, some of those principles. But um, I was going to say two things. So I'd love to kind of touch on, you know, Seth Godin and, and you know, just oh, kind yeah, of your does. influence. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on as well when, whenever you're you're down is maybe just for people, because I, I don't talk a lot about Kwanzaa, not because I'm ashamed of it. I actually love it, but just because I don't get an opportunity to. So I was going to say maybe just for our listeners, just, uh, you know, who maybe Jacob is and what, what Kwanzaa is doing too. That'd be helpful. Oh. So, so yeah. So, so first Kwanzaa is the easy one. Like they, they sell this. They they have a bunch of experiments that that for in, that are designed specifically for engineering schools. Uh, this, is this your pitch? This is terrible. You got to start again. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just putting you on the spot. I don't care. <laughs> Go the best thing, the best thing is I'm not kidding. to care. <laughs> Educate, innovate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> question kidding, answer. Is, is it a question <laughs> answer? It's it's what it's in. Uh, what's it called? Uh, quantum theory where disposition. I forget what it's called, but yeah, it's yeah. A question answer. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Continue, continue. But yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So so that, I mean, there's a lot of you know teaching equipment. That was kind of one side where you kind of sell for undergraduate labs or, you know, sometimes they're used for like inverted pendulum experiments. I remember having my, like, it was a DC motor experiment. I mean, we did a bunch of videos. I think you could probably look up on YouTube where- We were like, sitting outside on the picnic table. It was like yeah, a helicopter yeah. flying. Ex yeah, exactly, that. exactly. Um, we tried just trying different things, but but basically, uh, yeah, like different, different, really cool experiments. And I'm um, like, things that I, I wish that I had, um, and so like that controls class and they're specifically designed, designed for teaching controls, which is one of the areas that I had the worst experience. Like I, I, it caused one, one year of those, what, one of those victory laps was caused specifically by, <laughs> by control systems. It's brutal. It was brutal. Yeah. And it was one of those things too, where it's like, it was interesting at the end of my, like, like that last time I took the co my last course. And I remember it was like, it was, I only had two courses to take and that was one of them. Um, and I got it and the light bulb went off and I had a great teacher who was just like, he was really good. And he was a young, you know, uh, adjunct prof or whatever it was like, uh, um, but it was, it was, uh, oh, sorry. Um, um, but basically, are you getting a loud noise on your end? It's just me. Mean? It's just, no, it's, it's. Let some me pause it for a second. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I just had, I just had some, uh, some ringing in the back, but, but yeah, so it was, it was like, I did once, once you get the topic, like, that's it. Like you're, you're good. Like you have, um, you understand it. And it was just such a, like, such an eye-opening experience where afterwards I'm like, I'm getting straight B's as opposed to like D minuses, where it was like, it was an order of magnitude improvement. So that was kind of the case with, with like Quantzer stuff where it could really like open, open students eyes to like, how things work and and um yeah jacob of karen was uh, i actually kind of like I, I always kept my distance from jacob me too i was always scared of him <laughs> yeah yeah he's, he's a bit very intimidating he's super br smart br bristle you know it's like uh so i remember he's like so the, what after the interview was like i was telling him about how poorly i had done in uh in in um in controls is like so this is gonna be like some type of like therapy for you <laughs> and i'm like I, I guess so i really did get over my uh my my lack of uh, of uh confidence and controls after after working for concert but it was one of these great great experiences and it got it got us that exposure to to everything and yeah that that particular like presentation I remember it was an ice cream cone where i was trying to research the territory and i called you before to do a little bit of like i had to do a presentation how are you going to attack this territory and uh i remember i put it into like an ice cream cone and there was yeah it was like seth godin was still is one of my my idols but um um also a co-worker from previous company that was selling the powerpoint dongle was was like had introduced me to him but he basically um you know he, he has one thing it was like uh i think bullets kill or something like that it was great uh like all bad powerpoint and uh it was 
from 2006 or something like that. And it's a fantastic, um, you know, fantastic guide for presentation. I think it's still very relevant, which is like no more than six words per slide. Like that's like his, his, his motto. So it's a lot of pictures, a lot of, you know, graphics. I don't know, maybe you can get away with more, more words, but uh, basically the whole idea is that you tell a story and, you know, the visuals are there just to help you tell the story, but they're not, they're not, a crutch to to work. It's not a document. Like uh, you know, uh, my 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 couple of things I want to just put on that point is is uh, I think it was you probably that told me this or something along these lines. I uh, was that humans cannot read and listen at the same time. So if you put a thousand words on your PowerPoint and you're talking to them and you expect them to listen and understand what you're saying, you can't because yeah, they're reading. It, it's it's <laughs> totally yeah. You, I mean. People just just put in to feel feel confident, but but yeah. So that was that was I remember one of the presentations that, that we had you know that that I I done for for concert that eventually you know got it. and it was, it was it really was a dream. I remember our my first trip was actually like business trip was with concert was with you to, to California. It was like a it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. was that the flight that we missed or no? No, 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 that, no, no, was, that to, was way later. That was, that was when we were way more confident. Yeah, that was to Austin. <laughs> we actually took separate flights that we 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 met at the airport, and then we took separate flights that connected and ended up in San Francisco. We rented a car. I, I still can recall every every stop on the way. We went up to uh, to Davis, and then. Uh, you know, we drove around, you know, UC Davis was the first meet with a shake table. Then it was like uh, visiting the campus there. And we, I think we ended up going back to uh, uh, Stan like Stanford and Berkeley. Like, th like this is stuff that I had, I had, you know, Berkeley, like you think like someone from, kid from Ottawa, you know, thinking about, thinking about the world, like Berkeley or Stanford. And, and uh, I remember like, like, you know, that was kind of the first exposure was like, whoa, like this is Silicon Valley. Like this is like, this is the place where like all of the Google is happening here. Like, the, and I remember just being exposed to that energy, like just, just by, j just th during those trips, it was just something, you know, something different. That, yeah, it was that, electric. Uh, it was like, it was different. Yeah. yeah, I remember that too. And and yeah, for me too, it was just like getting to go to California and all these places that you only like, you know, dream about was, uh, was yeah, awesome. So so I said it was a dream job before I decided to ruin my life with a startup. Um, it, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> but it was before we move, before we move on yeah. to the startup stuff, I wanted to ask you one more. Uh, there was something that was top of mind. I wanted to ask you, I mean, well, well you get a couple of things, a couple of things. On the Seth Godin um, yep. thing I wanted to mention is another one of my big takeaways was kind of his his laser focus on um on building remarkable products like things that people remark yes. about instead of trying to like do marketing after like you 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 engineer things such that it's viral from like the product itself and that was always like the word remarkable 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 always kind of stands out do you, oh, do you remember yeah. that i think it was there was the it was purple cow i think was the name of the book that he had talked about that's the one yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and uh it was uh, the spreading the idea of virus i remember i think was another one of those but um yeah that book that book had uh had opened you know my eyes i remember i i never really like read much business books but i remember moving to toronto and that was kind of my first business venture where i bought a house and lived in the basement and rented out the rooms and i had lots of time i just i just became like a voracious reader of of like seth i read everything that he had even even i think what went back to like his stuff like how to build a website <laughs> like guerrilla, guerrilla marketing yeah another massive thing that i that now that i'm thinking back that you you brought into my world that has had a huge impact is tim ferris oh yeah, yeah that was another <laughs> yeah that's another book that, the four hour work week right yeah. that was another book that i remember you were do you still read his stuff follow his blog oh, right. and by the way Leo, like if you're wondering what i'm trying to do here right so my theme is building on bitcoin right so um like Bitcoin is a big part of it, obviously, but the building is another big part of it. And so I try and like touch on things that at least that I've learned along the way that I apply like almost every day in my work. And, and, and now that I'm talking to you and thinking about it, like a lot of these things I actually picked up way back uh, from you. Well, there was, yeah. So, 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 so definitely like uh, Tim, Tim Ferriss was a big, like the seven, the, the seven hour work with like, Oh my God. It's like, how do I think about a business that, that I don't have to like, I don't have to be engaged with all the time. And, you know, I, I expect, 
So the one thing that I always do, I'm experimenting all the time with different things. Like, uh, and that's also something I learned from, uh, there was another book like by AJ Jake was called My Life is an Experiment, which was like, like he, he lived biblically for, for a year and he like, he, you know, he would, he would radical honesty experiments. Like he would do all these experiments and it kind of it always kind of stuck in my head until I like turned it into a practice. But, but yeah, so I'm always doing experiments. So like, definitely real estate was one of those experiments it was um I, I, like i did a, a business with with uh, my brother for um we tried something called uh virgin mary grilled cheese sandwich maker which was kind of like one of our experiments where we tried to make something like back in the early 2000s golden palace ca casino had purchased a virgin a, a grilled cheese sandwich that had an image of the virgin mary in it for like a quarter million dollars and like wow now's the time to seize on this business what if we could create a uh, like a product that allowed other people to make you know the the image of the virgin mary in a grilled cheese sandwich so like we had you know it was i, I did that I, I i bought lots off of ebay and tried to like sell them i i, I ended up buying about four thousand video when i was still living in ottawa and going to school i bought four thousand used sega genesis video games <laughs> and uh and off of a lot and I had no clue if they were working or not, but I remember like Canada Post showed up at uh, my parents' home with 20 boxes <laughs> and they came home and they're like, what is going on here? Why do we have, you know, I spent the whole summer, like as my summer job, trying to, uh, trying to sell off, you know, on eBay, lots of tents. So all sorts of crazy stuff. So, so in fact, back at Quanser days, I was always kind of doing had like some type of side hustle inside business that I was trying to wrap, you know, to, to experiment with. Um, so I got out of the real estate stuff, but the other thing that I did was actually, it was when I got mentioned on, on Seth Godin's blog, which was um, an app, like the iPad had just come out and he's like, oh, you know, it would be a dream if I came out with a, uh, you know, if there was an app that allowed you to do nonlinear presentations so remember that uh, i remember yeah. that wasn't it called non-linear it was called non-linear yeah that's right <laughs> you got a good memory yeah so <laughs> so so i ended up hiring first this team out of like based off of the four-hour work week right i i learned about elance and now it's i think it's uh, guru i don't forget what it's called it had like three different iterations along the way but hiring a team out of romania to like build the first version of it and then um we ended up having uh, like another like another team out of Pakistan, and it was it was horrible. Like the, it barely functioned, but <laughs> if it's so, but then the, the iPad generation one, I still had one until like I actually tried to revive it over the summer, and um, it like it barely worked anyway. So it was it was like a, a couple months later, I'm like I wrote to Seth, hey, by the way, thanks for the inspiration. Here's a version of it. I, I was going to give money to the Acumen Fund, which was like part of the thing that he was really uh, excited about. And that was kind of like, I got mentioned, that was the first time, like I got a big spike. That's the first time I got that little adrenaline rush out of like, whoa, like someone, all of these big, you know, famous guys are really, ex are actually accessible. Like if you can, you know, you know, say that they're human beings and they want to help people and, uh, you know, you can do something and get, and get like, get, get a, uh, um you know get a response from them and and so it's 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 really it's really interesting to kind of like that that kind of really started to accelerate things and that's where you know i started to look at at, at uh, kickstarter yeah sorry yeah okay, even before that i know i keep like prompting you to say a couple of things but i just like i'm just thinking about these things and and they they literally like now that i think about it it really shaped kind of the way i see the world too which is uh do you remember oh, what was that guy's name? There was like an open source UAV company by Chris Wired Anderson. Magazine. Chris Anderson, yes. Do you want to talk about that? Because I, I so clearly remember this story where we were sitting in a room, you had set up a call with him and he was pretty much like preaching the whole open source game. And, and I, to this day, like I said, I can close my eyes and I don't remember the exact words, but I can remember the feeling that I had and how 
I don't want to say threatened because, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel I felt threatened, right? Like, I mean, here's this company that was like doing kind of what we were doing or trying to do similar things, but like orders, orders of magnitude, cheaper, faster, like oh, yeah. open source and free this, free that. But but I don't know, like, what, what was your kind of, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, just talk about that if you can. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so part of so I think what happened after, I don't know if it was before or around the time of the, the Seth Godin, but it kind of got me thinking like, hey, all these people are totally totally like they're normal people and they want to they, they have lives and they want to build and do interesting things and and i don't remember how i actually got uh, you know um got connected with with chris i think it was just like um hey you know i know you're doing work we're doing work i'm going to be in the bay area it was always like my pitch like i'm going to be in the bay area like visiting for toronto <laughs> so smart so smart yeah, and, and, Eric, yeah, grab and, my coffee. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'd love to meet up, you know, share with you what some of the things that we're doing. You know, I thought I think they could be helpful, you know, and hear the reasons why ABCD. Um, and uh, and sure enough, like I think at that time, you know, Quanzer was was uh you know, doing some some work in UAV and uh he was doing work in UAV, which was totally separate from like his wired business. He he was also had a side hustle, <laughs> you know, doing doing I think three like uh three DX or something. It was like a uh um, but but yeah, so so I think I remember his his line in that call that we were on because we were trying to figure out what to do with him, you know, from from the quantum side. And it was kind of like, yeah, my job is to put companies like yours out of business. I think that, that was, was like, the line. That yeah. that was the one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and, why would he say that? Okay. I remember, I remember he, was, he was having that call. <laughs> yeah. He, well, no, he wanted to like he wanted to get rid of all of these like like his big book at the time was I think the long tail was one of like was was the book and he was like it's like information wants to be spread like you can't uh the whole idea the only way to make money in the future is to offer like everything and to make money off of the long tail of stuff like uh, hey, just that did that thesis carry out I'm just curious like if we if we were to go now forward in time 10 years later 12 years later like, did did he really destroy those businesses? And did he kind of take over, over like the you? I, I mean, I, I didn't follow his work all that much, but like, or or was it like that they both just coexisted? Because it always felt like to me, like, you know, if you've got the whole MATLAB and Simulink and that that WinCon and you know Quark <laughs> or whatever it was, and you had all that hardware, software, beauty, you know, it's like it's kind of hard to kind of just say that you don't need it. But I don't know. I, do you? I don't I haven't been really following the space all well, that. Well, you think about it. Like even even if you have open, you know, source. Course. there's or diy diy drones so i think was the, his his like that's project. the one but but he ended up creating like a i don't know if it's still around but it was it was a professionally built like uav company like like that made you had to pay a lot to use those to use those drones i don't think they were cheap drones in the end but i think they were based <laughs> off of <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> but i i think i think the whole idea though was to drive down the cost of of the component technology so that like companies so, so that the cue ball doesn't cost 40 grand <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry no how much does it cost now we shouldn't be talking about it probably, it was probably i'm sure they brought down the cost i used to love that thing it was i i had this so i have a soft spot in my heart remember the cue ball there was in the cue Q ball matters? was like I, I i all i could hear the sounds of the drone of like the rotors all this is like please kill me it was the, it was it was lifting itself up was like existence is so painful for the cue for the cue ball because it was lifting this huge cage around it that weighed like that that took up like probably 80 percent of its payload was in the like it's payload capacity was in the in the cage itself and it was just like, like struggling to move around with this <laughs> it, was, it was just a horror like and it was just like please kill me like the whole the whole like i, I, I should... have a I have a dji now which yeah. i don't think i'm even allowed to fly anymore because of all the regulations and everything but back when it, there wasn't it was it just did i think of that versus what we were kind of selling i mean it's pretty pretty crazy how far some of this tech so, comes so so i think, and I remember, think remember, yeah sorry remember the golf cart <laughs> Oh goodness, the golf cart! Yeah, I, the, I the UGV. It. Sorry, I mean the unmanned yeah. ground vehicle. <laughs> I, but we were, we were. I mean, in many ways, way ahead of its time, right? I mean, like uh, we're talking 12, 15, 16 years ago, uh, working on cars that drive themselves. Like back then, anybody would have thought we were like completely wacko. Um, but now, cars do drive themselves to some extent. 
Well, yeah, well, it was, in, that was, by the way, I have, I'm on record in 2011. I think, Isida, you had made some some presentations this, like- I went the year before uh, you, so you probably yeah, just copied before, what I said, but yeah, go on. I, pretty much, <laughs> but um, but I remember like having that presentation. Wait, wait, these, before like, you say, Isida stands for what? The yeah, electrical, electrical and Computer Engineering Department Heads Association. Boom, exactly. mic drop, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So there, there you go. It's uh, so a bunch of like uh, crusty old deans of, uh, of engineering. No, not deans, department heads. You have the department heads and you have the dean and then you have the, you know, whatever the university dean but um yeah so so it was uh it was this talk uh, i think it was in arizona too I, so one of the amazing again amazing things about having your territory was that like just the places you could go like i traveled I traveled 100 i did i got super elite for air canada for like four years just by traveling within north america which was uh i bet you did was, yeah i you did those must, uh, yeah yeah i did, that, I did anyway, day trips to to San Francisco it was crazy um but yeah so so that so I remember making a like a 2011 it's on record you can look at YouTube it said by the end of the the decade we're gonna have self-driving cars and, uh, and and it was even before then but part what, what really informed me like that's when we started to get into like I got into the singularity stuff you start so just for people to understand like our desks were right next to it like there was this this this, this there were like they were right you had the corner office, which was great because your your monitor didn't face where there was no one walking behind you. So Strategic. the whole fact, the whole fact that you're into like Bitcoin was a result of you not having people walking behind you at, at the office. So, Actually, I should share that story too. So you don't remember it, we should yeah. for the record. So I'm yeah. most likely wrong, but I have this like glimpse of this like memory that like that which is you know because most people before they take serious bitcoin seriously there's like it's like you need to kind of you need to hear about it or see it a couple times like rarely do you like well, first time you see it and you're like oh so even though i know i had my like super aha moment when i read the paper white paper in 2012 in india my gut says that and you probably don't remember, but I think maybe you said it and you forgot. But I think you you would because you will read all these weird things, right? You're always like, you know, on the interwebs, you kids. So you came to me one day, I'm pretty sure. And you just I don't think you said anything. You just asked me, I thought, like, have you heard about this Bitcoin thing? Anyways, maybe it was another guy, um, but I don't see who else it would be. Like, it just wouldn't make sense. So like you said, like our desks were right here. So like- He had this divider and it was kind of like, if you remember Home Improvement where there was like Tim and the neighbor and it was, uh, they would always go up and talk, like, to, like... would talk to each other. <laughs> hey, Sonny, hey, Sonny there. It's like, it, it, then we'd go on these walks and it was ping pong games. There was, it was like a lot of, there was a, a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits to, to working out of the office. I oh yeah. And in fact, I, two other co-founders for, for like my startup were. were yes. Yeah, so let, let, let's maybe switch gears into that one. Um, you know, I, I think we could talk about Kwanzaa forever. We probably should. We should probably start creating some content on robotics, man. Now everyone's like, I think there's going to be like a robotics renaissance. We should just start our, like the Sunny and Leon, Lior uh, podcast and just start like interviewing people. But, uh, but okay. So let's talk about um, Ubi and kind of like, you know, the whole story behind, um, what was it? Kickstarter. And I don't know, just all of that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I, that, I was, that, that. For me, yeah. that was, that was important because it was like, not Silicon Valley anymore. It was like the guy, like the, the guy across the table making moves. Uh, so yeah, that was very, very inspirational for me. So let's share that story. So we were, so, so this was kind of the evolution of that, of that app as well, that app idea where, where it was like, you know, we would go out for lunch. We talk about all these cool things that were happening. We talk about like Kickstarter where um, I don't know what was like the big, the pebble watch was kind of the big thing at the I time. Remember, um, I remember. Yeah. And, and which was like a Waterloo grad who is, who is, uh, you know, had been, you know, bringing up that. So it was, it was like really, it was really incredible to kind of see all of these things that were taking off. That was a big year, like 2010, 2011, 2012 for Kickstarter. And so like, we'd go out for lunch. I remember at the time, I think I was into after Tim Ferriss's like uh, blog post about like going from geek to freak about weight gain. I was eating like 12 eggs at lunch. And so I'd go into the grocery store next door and we'd be having these conversations while I was trying to down all these eggs. But, um, we, you know, one of the things that, that uh, you know, if we first started experimenting and was, you know, one of our colleagues was, uh, was into uh, salsa dancing. 
and um, and haptics. And we thought, what if we could like combine salsa dancing with with haptics? So we tried this idea of like, what? And the iPhone was like fairly new, like only a couple of years old, but it had this like now it had a haptic feedback on it. What if you know? What if you could like listen to salsa and um, apparently the timing is really difficult. So what if you could move your phone to the, the, the timing and then if you got it right, it would give you haptic feedback and you kind of learn how to do it that way. So we built this prototype and we thought, all we have to do, is we just have to put it on Kickstarter like, and it will just take off. And like 20, we, we spent a, a summer, like two dudes to, like basically coming up with a website from the Pakistani like developers where you, you listen to this different instruments and you have to tap a button and that was kind of the prototype for it. But um, we ended up putting on Kickstarter. We were just two guys talking about like salsa dancing. The, the prizes were like, we would send you salsa if like if you donated $10. Actual salsa, and, okay. Uh, Okay. Actual salsa. Like we picked up like a basket of salsa. We put your name in the credits, but it was before Patreon. So we kind of treated, treated Kickstarter like a Patreon and uh, we put it on Kickstarter and I was like, oh my goodness, this is it. Like now this is our payday. Like we're, we're out of here. Like we're, <laughs> we can retire after, after, after this. And um, uh, in the end of 60, we put it on for 60 days. In the end of 60 days, we had two backers. Um, it was myself and it was him and uh and like today do not like google salsa clock like kickstarter does a great job of like bearing unsuccessful uh like uh kickstarters but it was just it was embarrassingly horrible but um like i i wasn't there like another one too like a canadian government funding portal or something oh yeah that was that was a startup believe it or not that startup is actually still going hey (laughs) hey hey uh, yeah (laughs) So that was for like getting getting this these research grants and funding. And I I would I was helping at the time like getting that. Also working you know for you know bringing in initially some um, you know some overseas uh, um, you know uh, managing the building of that website. But yeah, all sorts of different ventures. But that was that was a first attempt on Kickstarter to do the salsa clock, and that that kind of like reset the expectation that you can't just like put something up and expect it to take off. Like you have to actually do the work. Build it, and they will dance. Yeah. So at the time, like all of this, the biggest thing was like this internet of things like was coming on board. So two things were happening. Prices of like Wi-Fi chips was coming down. It's 20, I think 2011, 2012. Um, 3D printing at, at like much better resolution was coming up. There was like all of these um, um, like the internet things were coming up things. So one of the things that we were thinking about like was what if we could create like um, an outlet that could like it could tell you if it was, you know, how much power it was consuming, but you can also turn it on and off through the internet or through an app on your phone. We thought that was really cool. Like now it's like, whatever, who cares about it? But, but at that time, that was pretty, that was something that's still pretty remarkable. And we spent a lot of time, like we worked with a few U of, U of T grads in order to put together prototypes for it. And we spent a lot of time like working on it. I remember this is like early 2012 and, um, we actually came in like so it's two other of our colleagues, you know, who, who ended up partnering with for this. We ended up coming in and uh, like filming a video like super early. Like we got to the office really early and we shot a the promo video for the Kickstarter and it was us interviewing. It was called Peach Plug. Um, and uh, and I remember like 9 a.m. we're at our desks and we're like we're like thinking, oh, th- this is wonderful. Like now we we look like we're in early to work, and we've, uh, you know, we we finished our shooting of the video, and we we you know I check out Kickstarter, and there's there's another Wi-Fi plug, and I'm like, oh great, we just kind of we lost our first mover advantage, which was kind of what we were banking on. But then again, it's like kind of like missing your, you know missing your trip on the Titanic because two weeks into that Kickstarter, um, Belkin came out with the Wemo, which was like the first like super cheap plug and it completely destroyed their their Kickstarter. So it was like, ah, oh, okay. So, you know, we that would have been our fate. Um, but it got us thinking about what, what else to do. What else could we do with this? And we were thinking about like, well, we already have 
internet on there and we have a, you know, what if we could have like a speaker on it to make announcements? Then we were thinking, what if we added a microphone to it? And then kind of the, the number of possibilities kind of really expanded outwards afterwards. Like you could do so much more. And that's when like everything started to, um, you know, all these ideas started to take off about what could be possible from, from this thing. Uh, and we ended up coming up with the name the Ubi, which was short for ubiquitous computer, but it kind of a side joke. My brother's made fun of me and called me Ubi, like as one of my like nicknames. Um, Wait, was it, like, it Ubi.com? No. What was it again? The uh, Ubi. The, the Ubi.com. The Ubi.com. Which might still be around, but I actually haven't checked it. You have the domain, the Ubi? Maybe. We, you know, we, another domain story. <laughs> Speaking of domains, I think you have an interesting handle now, but. Uh, um, I haven't shared that publicly yet. So I, I'm not mentioning it. I'm not mentioning it. See, I, I, held, <laughs> I held my tongue. But um, there was another website called Thubi, which was missing the E that someone else had, had basically registered. And it was a. Um, not a not safe for work type of website and uh and i remember we actually had to like go the route of of acquiring it in order to uh to 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 like get get back thubi.com but in any case so the ubi we, we we ended up coming up with like this idea and we thought it was really interesting and that was when we started to do like this pre-work where we would analyze all of those kickstarters that were out there that were successful like the pebble like I, I, I'm blanking on the other stuff that was there, but we were like, we broke it down to like 15 different elements of like word count, number of graphics, uh, tier levels for, for rewards. Um, you know, who did they co-market with and we kind of made it into like the science where we tried to like figure out what was the pattern. So even if it wasn't a successful Kickstarter, it would look like a successful Kickstarter. So that's where we, um, you know, and then the other thing too was like to make a big splash uh, on on launch and that's where you know it was this kind of no commit thank you um which was re you know making a list of all the people who had been you know all the celebrities who have ever influenced like me and authors or whatever and it was just like a preemptive thank you saying hey i just want to let you know i read your book um it was a big influence on my life um one of the outcomes is that, you know, I'm now launching a Kickstarter project. Just wanted to say thank you. If we're successful, I'd love to send you one. You know, don't feel any obligation whatsoever um, to do anything. So that was kind of a, um, like one of the things that we did beforehand. And sure enough, a few of the people wrote back, yeah. And Leo, just so people know, like, like, cause we're using a lot of words, right? But essentially it was like, Alexa before Alexa, right? Like, I mean, if we had to say it in a few words, like this was yeah. like, this was like the first, at least in my experience, first time I had heard, seen, felt like, and actually experienced a device that I could just plug in. That's like, that you can talk to and ask, you know, what's the recipe yeah. and da, 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 da. It was a Star Trek computer. Like that was the- And this is in 20 what? Even, when was it? 2012. 20, 2012. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 2012. It's concept even, you know, 20, 2011. And like we were, um, yeah, we were, we were kind of thinking like th this is going to be, you know, we had, we had a real like on paper idea of how we would build it, but we ended up making like this, uh, uh, this, this demo, you know, version of it that was make it like, till you make it. Oh, it was completely faked. Yeah. It was, it was all <laughs> vaporware. We, we were, yeah, we were using we were using like text to speech, but all these other things were coming out. Like there was this text to speech um, that was that was now available from so speech to text that was available through Android that was that we were like banking off. There's all these other technologies that were kind of catching up that we figured we could ride. So so yeah, we we launched it in August of 2012, and you know, ended up we had a target I think of like. I don't know if it was thirty thousand or something like that. Like we we had some we had like a super low sixty thousand target or thirty thousand target. We ended up hitting it in the first like day. We we had our Kickstarter pro, uh, target which was super low, and then we had like another target which was like we're going to cancel the project before it ends if, if we don't hit this thing. So which was you know like a double that, and then. Um, yeah, we we wanted to show that we could blow it out of the water very very quickly. Yeah. Wait, sorry, thirty thousand dollars was your goal, right? Our goal was thirty. Is that yeah, what you mean? We act yeah, and how much you guys end up raising? I forget. Two hundred thirty thousand. So 
And 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 the fake it till you make it part. I have a question. So I agree, you have to kind of right because that's how Kickstarter works. You have to tell them, oh, I'm gonna build this. Okay, give me your, I guess, the money, and then we're gonna go build it. But like, did you guys like feel like okay, well, we could actually pull this off? Because I, I mean, you guys did, but like, you know, that's not so easy, right? To to be able to build like yeah. something that the biggest company in the world, like, you know, is is kind of building. Like you guys are just like three random guys. Um, <laughs> but just yeah. curious, like, what did, what did that? That must have been like. And another thing is, I, I always say as well is that they call you know software hardware. They call hardware because it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, part, but like, yeah. what did that look like? That whole process of going from like idea to like, oh my god, to like actually building something, right? So, so it was it was pure ignorance that got us most of the way, and like, um, I think the like mo- most of the stuff that we were it was a lot of debating, but most of the stuff was like, oh, we'll use you know spreadsheets and uh and some like some marketing to figure out you know bill of material costs and other like we we were completely wrong about everything that we had designed <laughs> so in fact uh you know just to give like cut to the chase is that you know what we ended up raising was about 20 percent of what we would need to actually deliver on the orders <laughs> that we we had made like we didn't figure in that there's actually like you know, development costs. It's not just <laughs> not just the cost of the hardware. <laughs> not just the shipping costs. There's and there's all sorts of things that we like we didn't we didn't factor in, like shipping, like overseas shipping or safety certification costs or you know FCC or you know trade you know trademarks or patents. There are all these other things that we're like we're to- we were totally ignorant about, and um, it, you know blissfully for a while and then you know it was only towards the end of our kickstarter that we had realized like oh my goodness how are we actually going to build this thing what have we gotten ourselves into (laughs) and and we just lit a fuse and but you know i think all of us were felt extremely morally compelled in order to deliver on what we had promised that this is that we we had done something big we made a big kickstarter in fact we got like i remember like during the campaign like it was that that high was a not something i'd never experienced before in terms of like feeling like hey like this is some success here like this is what success it was like getting you know getting in wired magazine of course was one that was getting tweeted by chris sanders was you know and uh it was you know getting on uh you know into forbes or getting into uh, on cnn or getting into like all, all of these other like hey this new invention it was remarkable it was something that was that had not been you know done in this way before that was very new and it touched a uh you know seemed to spark an interest by people and that was that was something this is incredible when you know people are able to experience that it's worth, worthwhile for for everyone because it's a it's an incredible high um but then you're chasing it like <laughs> so so the, the 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 what happened afterwards is like we realized like we thought we were going to just you know basically we're going to put google into a into a box and we're done like we're gonna we're gonna be done this thing in two months. We're gonna be on to our next, you know, our next project. Like done, easy. We we were just thinking this is gonna be a project. We didn't think this was actually gonna be a business. Um, and uh, what happened was, uh, am I still good? By the way, you can still hear me. I'm not choppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, I'm yeah. just uh, I'm just grimacing at the story. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no, I'm so, so, so Google in a box. So it is true yeah, though. Google so, in a box. So we is. we had ended up. Um, you know, we, it was only then that we're like realizing like, oh my goodness, like we can't actually put, um, we, we don't have a trigger word for this thing. We don't really have a, you know, we have to figure out how we're going to do uh, speech to text. We're going to have to figure out how we do NLU. What are the features that we are going to put on there first? What are we not going to put on? What are we, what things are we going to integrate with? Like, and all of that had to be planned out. And that was like, we had a, we, we put a timer for ourselves to deliver. Like we were going to deliver in six months from now, you know, initial backers at this level. And that was, um, you know, that was kind of a hard realization and just, it made, it wasn't so fun after that, like, especially realizing that, like, we did not have enough money in order to deliver on this, like, we were way underneath our estimates, and every day we were getting more and more underneath it. Um, so we knew that if we were going to have a chance of delivering it and potentially growing this out, we had to start raising money and starting start, start to look for, for money. And that, 
not really, you know, we didn't get into it thinking we were going to, we were going to go that route. Like, yeah, we're going to launch this on Kickstarter. We're going to prove it out. Then we're going to go for a angel round. Then we're going to raise this amount. And we had no plan like that whatsoever. Zero. Like this was a whole, like, this was kicking a can and seeing, seeing what would happen. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, that, that was uh, like, you know, we, we really had to kind of trip over ourselves in order to figure it, figure it but out. You guys magically somehow pulled it off though, right? Like you did actually, I remember at least when I was living in India, you guys sent me a freaking Ubi. I'm pretty sure I plugged it in. It wasn't just like a, an empty box. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It, it worked. So, so we had, we had to, we found a, uh, you know, we didn't realize that at the time, but we were actually very, you know, lucky to have in Toronto, a number of you know, custom um, manufacturers that would do that would do it. And we found components and, um you know we ended up uh we ended up finding like um yeah find, finding suppliers for it figuring out what open source technologies could work and and we always kept on like i think one of the things that really kind of bought us a lot of time is be, was being you know constantly posting to our backers about everything that was happening like every few days we would be posting like, Hey, we're working on this. This is really tough. Like, and it was also shutting down any like comments almost immediately. So if someone said like, Hey, what's going on guys? Like, is this ever going to, I'm like, Hey, yeah, we're right here. Like two seconds later, we would be posting like, and we weren't going to be like that, that company that, uh, that disappeared that went from like, Oh, things aren't really working out nicely. And then like you leave it for three hours and all of a sudden there's a riot going on in the comment section of your, of your page. So we were always like really careful in, in like cultivating that community and people people ended up defending us too if things were delayed and we we just kept on like uh, and the other the way the way kickstarter works is you don't for that quarter million dollars whatever you you didn't have to give up equity right you just had to deliver them a product essentially right not not even really like (laughs) what are they paying for just like uh just to be part of the process you had to be you know honest about your that you're making honest efforts in order to to actually you know deliver on it and and um, but uh, I believe at the time, I don't know if it's the case now, but, but at the time it was like, Hey, some, this might not work out. Like you might not get your stuff. Like you're, you're, you're taking a chance and, uh, people are doing this for the first time. You're going to give your best effort. And if it doesn't turn out, like you might, you might not ever get your thing. So, uh, I think that was, yeah, there was kind of like, uh, th- that was something very unique about is, Kickstarter. Is Kickstarter still pretty big? I don't hear about it for some reason. Yeah, I, it was like a big thing back in the day, no? Yeah, I check it out every couple of months, and mm. uh, it's almost like, oh, another board game or you know, three D printer. <laughs> that's uh... <laughs> They're still doing three D printers. Okay, uh, yeah. okay. So, the, but that, that's a, that is a fascinating story, and I think at the time that was like one of the biggest kind of I think right raises or something, yeah, and it was after... like, and you ended up meeting uh, what's it called Steve Jobs' uh, co-founder well, um, was, as well, right? Was, was. yeah. yeah. So we got a, we got an order through. Uh, we, so we dealt with everyone. It was Apple, Amazon, Google? It was all like everyone was, but but yeah. So we, we ended up getting. What did an Uncle order. Jeff say? <laughs> check out the Wall Street Don't Journal. Ask. All right. Oh Just shit! Check it. Yeah. <laughs> Google Wall Street, yeah. <laughs> Is Google Wall Street Journal? Well, yeah, no, no, don't. You're going to have to do a little bit more than that. But like, uh, you know, Lior, Wall Street Journal, and then, or Ubi and Amazon. Is this why he just out. quit? Finally. Let's yeah. not say anything. No more, no more, no more, no more. Okay, I, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're taking him down, hey, baby. The, <laughs> Their little I'm darling Alexa child. Ch- huh? Fast forward many years, I'm considered an Alexa champion, which means I, you know, I don't know what that gives of me. Of course, you are. Yeah, Amazon yeah. has bestowed on me the honor of, of uh, you know, promoting voice technologies. So uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about Amazon. Oh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I love Amazon. They own me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so we, so we ended up having dinner with the, the Waz, though. Like we got an order after a Kickstarter, we ended up getting an order, you know, from this like guy, Steve Wozniak. And we're like, come on, like come on like this is and there's like verified order and then like hey thank you so much but i'm gonna be in the bay area <laughs> so using that line like, you know that i typically and he's like no i'm traveling all the time i'm gonna be in like toronto and i'm gonna be and i'm like okay well if you're in toronto you gotta come visit us so we ended up meeting him for we, we ended up taking him out for uh, a steak dinner at uh, ruth's chris and, sweet uh, yeah 
it was it was it was like surreal like just like very very interesting very interesting conversation but like all sorts of people came out of that like singularity people like kevin kelly ended up uh meeting with meeting with him and you know he was he was like what technology wants and uh 1000 was it uh 1000 true fans was another mm-hmm. like big pop, pop and it was just like surreal like so so one nice thing about this experience it opened the door to a lot of like like a lot of interesting ideas and and yes we ended up raising money we ended up you know going and taking it as far as we could before the you know the echo had come out and kind of to fast forward many years with many pain and not spend like three hours talking or whatever three about the dark part yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. to, to focus on the exciting but it, part it was it was it was a very interesting experience that opened the door to many things so yeah yeah, yeah. Could, no i hear you no i think i mean what is it uh success matters failure is, is inconsequential so you know it's, it's we're just talking about the big successes in there so i i do well no look i, I mean if you don't try what's gonna you're never gonna get anywhere yeah. and uh so uh, what I was going to ask on the, oh, right. I was going to ask you, have you tried Clubhouse yet? I think I saw you come on the other day, no? Or did I, was that some other Lior? Are you on Clubhouse? So, I'm not, not. My brother's, my brother's also another great source of, of information. He was telling me, he was telling me about Clubhouse, but. You, I, you're I not on what, Clubhouse. Oh, dude, you got to get on Clubhouse. No, you hate it. <laughs> no, I, I, I've heard, of, I have no opinion. You, you'd of it. be it's great like, on it. I think, I think you're kind of, yeah. So, so now, so now I've, I'm, I'm in lockdown with, uh, so what it's, uh, it's February, 2021. And, uh, there's a, a lockdown. This kids are not in school. I got, I got a baby and <laughs> two, two, uh, a, a toddler and a, uh, and a school age kid. And it's, it's impossible to <laughs> do anything. So at some point I'm going to, I'm going to get on, clubhouse and really check it out so if, if, if i had to describe it in a few words it's like a con it's like a 24 7 conference in your pocket it literally like the if you and if you ever try when you try clubhouse because you will this is the biggest thing in social media since like 2006 dude like i i don't like social media i don't i mean twitter is pretty cool but other than that not a big fan but this is massive um it's insane. Like Elon Musk was on it yesterday, I think, or two days ago. Yeah, um, I, heard, and I heard about it. Yes, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's like it's all voice. It's just voice, but they just the way they. I heard they have one one iOS developer, and they're like, you know, the talk of like everyone's talking about Clubhouse. Like it's oh, the it's power only on code. iPhone, right? It's only, only on, like, yeah. You have iPhone, no? You're an iPhone uh, guy. I, I can I use oh, you Mac? moved. Can I use a Mac for it or iPad? You got an iPad? I thought you were like iPhone, iPad guy. I had, I had, I had the original iPad. For yeah. That, oh, since then you iPad. haven't. Okay. Okay. We need, no, you need an no, iPhone have, or an iPad. I have a, I have a few. I have an older iPhone around. I'm sure I can get it, uh, get it up and running. So. I yeah. Can, well, yeah, I can give you an invite, but it's it's super cool. It's it's fun. I mean, I'm sure it'll come to all the different platforms, and I'm thinking of doing some stuff on there as well, like more, I don't know, just like community stuff or whatever just engaging with people and and now with the covid thing you know it's like not much of a a conference scene oh you even came to one, one of my uh, one of my bitcoin events remember i did that was that was amazing that was any that was any amazing. any questions thoughts comments on bitcoin um oh, i don't know I got, in general a lot so first yeah. of all you got me you got me into good dollar so let's let's just talk about that for a second please truth i want to tell you the truth I have no idea what, so I'm going to spend this month. This is like one of my experiments is to understand something. So I start off with almost zero knowledge and see how much I can gain by the end of it. So I'm focusing this month as my experiment to actually understand and write about good dollar. So I do it like a daily, I try to do a daily post, but this month I'm focusing on good dollar. So I I have no clue exactly how it works. All right. All I know is I go every day, I press a button saying claim and a little animation happens and I get a little more money. I know that. I also know that there's a Facebook page, all right, that you can go to and there's a whole bunch of people selling likes <laughs> for, for, for videos <laughs> or follows or tw- tweets or something like, and that's pretty much all, or, or tutoring. And that's really what you can use your, you can gain good dollar by doing that or you can spend, you know, you could choose to, to actually sell some stuff, but every now and then that's basically what I see. I like it because, it, this is like gambling for me and I can go in and I can press the button and I, am I going to get 20 good dollars today or am I going to get 30 good dollar today? And I have no clue if it's ever going to be worth something, but I enjoy that aspect of it. 
So I want to figure out what it is. Maybe you can give me some idea of what it actually is doing there. Because that's the other UBI, right? The universal basic income, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I usually save that question too to the end. But no, I, I, I know exactly what project you're talking about. I actually bring it up like quite often um but yeah there's a guy named yanni who started a company called etoro that most people probably know about and at least in bitcoin uh he's also i think his name is on the colored coins paper which is kind of like smart contracts and stuff like that way before ethereum like on bitcoin um and then he yeah he recently i was at the i was at this like event you know there's a lot of stuff happening in bitcoin land i told you a little bit about what's happening in india um travel rule fat of this that and anyway so i was in um oh there's just so much sorry sorry i'm kind of I, you, you know um Lira, i was gonna say is, is like i'm kind of uh there's a lot of things on my mind but I, I, let's just maybe focus on the good oh, yeah. dollar thing how in my eyes in my view i mean just in short i think the way it works is uh, it, they they're they're built on top of ethereum so it's not really bitcoin related it's built on top of ethereum and from what I understand, they use kind of the profits generated from DeFi, I guess, to uh, like these smart contracts um, to. And, and so I guess you could kind of think of it as like imagine a bunch of like robots, but not like physical robots, like algorithms that are working online that are trying to make money. And, and whatever money is generated is distributed amongst the people. But that core kind of um, asset base, uh, from what I understand, I, I, haven't, I haven't even looked at it that deeply. I just I should probably. Um, the core asset is, is like literally like I could be like, OK, I'm just going to put you know, a hundred dollars into this. I don't really make anything or anything, but, but that hundred dollars can be used in smart contracts to generate, you know, universal basic income for everyone. Like, you know, $20, $30, like you said, a day. Um, that's kind of the, I, I mean, essentially what I think Yanni's trying to do is he's trying to make universal basic income, uh, you know, available to everybody on earth that has nothing to do with like governments per se. It's, it's built on top of the blockchain. It's like free market based. It's, uh, you know, all just like uh, algorithms and things like that. And I think it's, I don't know, I think it's clever. I think it's clever. Like I said, my beef with, uh, with universal basic income is I don't like the idea that governments, you know, kind of like take money from certain people and distribute it. Like I'm kind of morally, I guess, against that long term. And so, you know, if the free market wants to come up with solutions to, to things like global hunger and things like that, I, I can get behind it, you know, at least, you know, learn about it. So that's all I probably know. But I, I do want to get Yanni on here. I mean, he's like a hardcore Bitcoiner and, and all that. So maybe maybe I'll, you know, once I get him on here, I'll share the interview with you. Sure. Yeah, no, well, he's I'm I'm in Israel now. So. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. How's that, man? How's Israel? How's oh. Israel living there? Oh, it's, it's, it's an adventure. I've been here for, for a couple months and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you miss home or not much. So I'm considering this home. Well, now. that is home so, now for yeah, you, I guess. Right. So, so no, I'll tell you what I didn't miss. I went inside today. It was 24 degrees. It was beautiful. <laughs> it's cold out right now. <laughs> it was, and yeah, it, it's, it's like February and I'm not, I'm not used to it. I, I love that. I love like, so I'm in, I'm in a place that's like not, not a big city. And so it's surrounded by nature and it's just like, incredible. I, I, I look out my window, there's the, the Mediterranean and uh, yeah, it's, there's some, there's some things that are, and I have my, my, uh, uh, my COVID-19 vaccine yesterday. So my first, first dose. Okay, cool. Which is just like freedom. Uh, like how yeah. much, how much Bitcoin to get, to, to get, if you want to, to get jump your... the line. Yeah. Wait, where's the, do. where's the vaccine from the, is it from which, which company? Actually, I don't even know anything. I'm going to stop asking questions along these uh, lines. Uh, is it Pfizer? The, I think it's a <laughs> Pfizer one. Yeah. I like the yeah. extra coolness of the Pfizer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, so let me pretty, know how it goes. Um, yeah, yeah. wag my tail, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's another kind of, uh, you know, oh, you were the one who kind of, uh, you know, put me on to, you know, making big moves in, in life. Like I'm not someone who likes moving. Like, let me tell you that I, I hate moving. Like I hate, move. I, I, I think I could count how many times I've moved on one hand. Like I hate moving, but you somehow like inspired me from those days. Like, oh, moving to India, you mean? Where where were you not living? Like, yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. Kind of like all so, over. 
I consider so, Earth my home, but yeah, no, I definitely I, consider Toronto my home, man. I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, but that's good. I'm glad you know you. <laughs> good you, on you. You had, you had influence <laughs> on me to make it to you know. I was thinking, oh, you know, it's not so bad. Sunny can do it. So <laughs> I think it's good, man. I think it's good. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I consider Earth my home. You've got to. I don't know. It's good to good to get out. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a bit. Uh, like before this whole even pandemic, I was kind of sick and tired of like traveling and getting on planes and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm enjoying just like uh, staying put for a little bit. <laughs> so our our going back to reminisce about our old times that really kind of got the, you know, got me out of the travel bug. Like a few few years of like traveling every I traveled every I think week or two with uh with that and it was it was crazy yeah, we were on the road yeah. and that was like a I, I've had harder jobs because I've worked in the oil field before and that was hard like climbing vessels that are like oh and like oh it was just so scary but uh but that job was also hard in its own way because it, it had like a physical element to it like I remember having to like go up like you know three stories with like oh there's no elevator in this you know university building and you're presenting to you know 50 professors in like tw- 15 minutes and you've got to like go up like with these military cases and like yeah. with robots in them and set everything up and it was like one thing went wrong and your whole presentation and you know you flying across the freaking con- continent and like it's all it's Stanford you know oh my god that was like some high stakes <laughs> it was, it was, just thinking about remember, it was like oh. i remember seeing you yeah present in front of like a stanford i remember that was one of, one of our first experiences that was pretty pretty awe-inspiring and i remember we, we ended up going to a lecture about um oh about solar energy costs i think you would drag me along you're like leo we need to go you were you were into uh, maybe i was i was like feed-in tariffs and oh. uh yeah, yeah i remember totally i was i was uh, super into that at one point so, so, so you got me thinking about this also before, and I'll tell you why. So, um, first, first of all, like I, we we talked a couple of weeks ago, and you're like, oh, okay, at least read the Bitcoin paper, all right? Do the do me a favor, read a Bitcoin paper, and and so I read it. Just so you know, I read oh. these the Satoshi paper. Oh said, wow! Oh, it's only it's only, it's only it's only eight pages, and I'm like, yes. it's not just eight pages. No, it okay. is. If you want to read, like. Uh, no, I had to look up what's a nonce. Like, what is you know what a nonce? Yeah, okay. No, I had no clue what a nonce okay. was. I to, okay. But the abstract, yeah. dude, the abstract is really all you need in the first paragraph or two. I mean, you can get if you can get there, you get the point, and the rest you just make it till you make it, dude. I've been yeah. in this game for ten years. I still don't get everything. I don't what think I ever will. Hash, like, like you know I, what I a hash pretend- is, no. Oh no, maybe I pretend, not. I, I pretend to know what a hash is, and then I look it up, and then I forget. No, I, 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 I'm yeah. sounding like, oh, you know what that is, but no, I, you know, I, I know, I, I know all this because when I moved to India, I started doing. Oh, right, that was the one thing I wanted to share. Um, so before I moved out to India, you guys were just like, I don't know, killing it. And at, at one point, I remember Myar, uh, one of your co-founders at the time, invited me to a meetup. To a meetup, it was like, I don't even remember what kind of meetup it was, but all I know, all I remember was, is that Meyer was going to present Ubi and there was like 40, 50 people at a bar. And it was like, it was, it was such a cool experience. It was my first time, I think, really going to a meetup. And I just love the fact that like, you could get, you could geek out, but you're hanging out and you're like, you're connecting with like-minded individuals and that, I mean, so there's so many things in this, in this podcast, even though I was just like, Oh, it's not going to, that, that, that I think back to that was like played a big part is um, when, when I moved to India, I was literally like, I want to connect with people and I, I don't want to just connect with them online. Like Bitcoin talk, there was all these forums. I was like, I want to see, I want to physically like, be like across from others that are passionate about Bitcoin. And I started looking it up online. I started seeing on Toronto, there's stuff happening and there was really nothing happening in India. And that was kind of really what started my journey, like in a big way for Bitcoin uh, was, was again, seeing you guys kind of do it with like, you know, with Ubi and like robotics and our experience and then going to India and being like, yeah, you know, I'm going to do the Bitcoin meetup thing. So, so thank you, man. Tim Ferriss, man, Seth Godin, just uh, sales, man, we could do, we could probably do a whole bunch of like, just like talks on sales and oh because like that stuff is hard to talk to about people right but it's so important it's like ah oh, sales man sales is so important you marketing oh, yeah. oh. well so 
yeah all, like that's even that's that's the the harder part of uh of of like it's the fun part is like oh you, launch, you press the launch button on the kickstarter or whatever you get the meetup you send out the invite for the meetup but it's like convincing everyone to actually show up and and uh or or there was one-on-one -on -one conversations to with suppliers or other things to, to get to get things moving but yeah so i want to get i want to ask you we can talk about Bit, more bitcoin stuff because i got i got I did, I did a little bit of homework not a lot but a little bit but um so one one of the things that like uh that kind of got me thinking about your like feed and tariff stuff was um you know you said okay one was i had to read the paper the second thing is i had to i had to try to like invest a little bit in bitcoin and just so you know like and you said just dollar cost average you know don't think about speculative and by the way like i'm totally not into speculative stuff i've all the experimental like things that i've done remember one of the things that just to tell you like i was 17 as my first summer job i was cleaning mud from underneath the buses in ottawa like that was my job I, night shift as well and i got paid ridiculously well for it i remember like it was uh you know i, was, I had the steam hose and i put on like this like a thing from psycho like where you're completely like uh no no not psycho what was the one with the uh the American Psycho, yeah, yeah. So he's like the complete like head to toe rubber thing on where, but in case I would put those on, I would go underneath the bus at night and I would kind of foam it down first, and then I would like use this high pressure hose to clean it, and it was it was actually pretty pretty cool. And then the unions wouldn't make me like I couldn't clean more than two buses a night, like, like otherwise I was going faster than the union guys. So I'd end up napping. It was it was a really really interesting experience, but it paid amazingly, and I got all this money, you know paid i you know tuition covered and everything and i had a bunch of money left over and this was 2000 right so or sorry yeah it was 2000 i'm like now's the time to get in on the stock market like come on <laughs> and uh and i put it i put on like this bunch of uh you know stocks an e e-trade account or whatever and it just like all tanked and uh it kind of burned me to like about speculative speculative markets so trying to trying to like buy things everything after that was smaller and smaller bets and then um so like when you say it to like oh you put my money in for like uh oh, i don't know i always try to find out like a roundabout way of doing something so i'm like you know what i can mine coin maybe like maybe i'll try mining in order to so i started to get into you know since we've spoken to the different mining uh solutions out there and like doing some thought experiments around around mining possibilities and uh and so one of those, I don't know if it's called Mac Miner or whatever. So I, I actually installed it, ended up running it. I'm sure I'm like ruining my computer and spending much more on uh, uh, on actual like um, like mining from my computer than I'd ever make back from uh, from it. But it kind of got me thinking in that direction. But I don't think I've ever told you this story before. But um, like one of the experiments that I'd done in this is 19, like this is 99. And like I just started university, and at that time there were these things for like get paid to surf the web. Do you ever remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I tell you this? It's I don't think you told me, but I I know what you're yeah. talking so, about. Like I know I remember those things. Yeah. So so like I love those types of like I love systems that I can manipulate or try to like. So so I I would I would start to like I first I put on the background and I'm like. Phew, I don't know if this is actually gonna like generate anything, but I'm like I'm gonna keep it on, um, and then and then I ended up uh, um, you know developing like just a web page to like that refreshed itself, like simple HTTP HTML that it would just like refresh, auto refresh every five seconds to keep it you know billing and making money off of it, and then uh, th their technology got smarter and it's like no, you have to move your mouse, it has to like measure. So in the end, I ended up creating this contraption where it turned off screensaver i'd have this auto refresh page and i actually took a mouse and physically connected it to an oscillating fan uh, it was like this whole ruby like goldberg type of thing where it was like this oscillating fan that would turn and it would move move this mouse and it would be like the mouse was because i didn't know how to program like mouse curse mouse moving so uh, so that's how i kept this like thing on for like 24 7 basically a fan moving and i was living at my parents home so electricity was free right so 
<laughs> and I remember three months later, I got this check for $10. <laughs> and it, it was like, it was a check. And I actually had to like take it to the bank to cash it. And they charged like $2 in order to, to deposit this American <laughs> American dollar check. But that, that kind of reminds me now of all of like these, uh, these, these mining, these mining tools that are there. But like, that's kind of the thing that I'm curious about. Like, I know there's ant miner and there's all of these like uh, these two, the people who are now like building solar farms with mining. Can you still like actually like make money off of mining if you're like without without a GPU first of all? Like no, is there? Yeah, I mean, no. I definitely wouldn't recommend anyone or try. I mean, you could just play with it, fine. But uh, in terms of like input versus output. Uh, yeah, it's just not worth time, you know, your computer like running in like full blast mode and like uh, and what you get at the end in terms of what you spend for the energy isn't worth it anymore. So GPUs aren't efficient enough. And uh, when I first got into Bitcoin, we were kind of still at GPUs and uh, and I think FPGAs. Remember FPGAs? Dude, FPGAs were actually a thing in Bitcoin, like for some period. Mm -hmm. And I... Um, and then and then we got into Bitcoin mining too back in like 2011, 2012, a little bit, just experimented with it, lost again. We kind of came in at a point, it's kind of hard to explain. There's like this thing called difficulty and it was just when the ASICs were coming online. And so we didn't do super well, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you should just like, I mean, if you're interested, just like, I, I mean, I think it'd be fascinating to have people like, you know, who are totally kind of new, just just like recording maybe content around their experience, because I think a lot of people might be able to relate. But um, yeah, yeah, dude, I think I don't know. It's hard to say. It's like Bitcoin is kind of boring um, in the sense that it's kind of designed to be, too. It's not like super exciting, but really, it's just about buying it every month and holding it. <laughs> Do you remember what it was when I uh, when I told you about it? Do you remember, or when I was kind of like on your guys' case? I think it was in is around the hundred dollar mark. Hundred dollars. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Because I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember. I just remember one time. Like I learned about it when it was sub ten dollars, and by I think when it hit around fourteen. Oh, I got a little visitor here. When it hit around fourteen, I I started buying, and I remember Paul Gilbert, our CEO at at Kwanzaa, had come and visited me in India and uh, we were on a plane. I was just like buzzing with excitement about Bitcoin. I was like, I gotta tell him, I gotta tell him. I'm like, Paul, have you heard about Bitcoin? I'm like, dude, this is it. This is the future of money. Like I know it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, he probably doesn't even remember that conversation but I was so bullish like uh, from, you know, from back then. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think I think the white paper is a good start. There's just so much. Well, yeah, the, the one thing is like, so the solar farm idea, like what mm. if you had a solar farm, you're not paying for the electricity or there's uh, yep. uh, it, so it ended up sending me down this rabbit hole where I was looking like, what's the, what's the global power consumption just for mining Bitcoin. And it's, uh, it's pretty high. Like it's, it's, uh, you know, a couple, what was the, I have a figure actually here. I can tell you what it was. I don't know. Oh, if you probably, you probably. I don't Isn't know the it, exactly, but it's a lot. It's like, it's like the equivalent of like nation states or something. <laughs> yeah, like I think it's like Switzerland's <laughs> consumption is, is. And the other thing was that like yeah. Iran, I think had like outages off of people mining. Like they have like brownouts or like blackouts yeah. even because of people people mining. But that kind of you know makes me think like, is there a gray goose scenario around like Bitcoin mining where you end up having like a, a I develop an AI and the AI is supposed to say, okay, make money for Lior. I'm going to release you, do whatever you can, just make money for Lior. And it spreads, it spreads like a virus. It ends up taking over our CPUs. And all it does is take over like more and more computing in order to, in order to like mine Bitcoin to the point where, you know, there's no life support systems, power grids, like the, everything is being used in order to, uh, in order to just like mine, mine Bitcoin for me. Um, I'm just, I, I'm, I was, I'm worried like that that's a, that's like a Grey Goose scenario there. Like nanobots are just to like take, devour everything just to replicate, you know, themselves so that they can mine Bitcoin at some point. So I don't, I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's a deep fiction. rabbit hole. Yeah. We'd have to like kind of maybe spend a whole session on it, but I've done some interviews with guys like Max Kaiser and stuff like that. And these guys actually believe that Bitcoin is the complete antithesis of AI in many ways, because AI is like data, it feeds off of data and th that data is, 
you know, really in the hands of two governments and five companies, uh, whereas blockchain is distributed and decentralized. And it's like you control your own private keys and maybe in the future, your identity and a lot of your assets and everything could be. So anyways, I, I do think a lot about like, you know, how AI and blockchain come together and, and uh, create a better future, not like a worse one. Um, but yeah, but it's, 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 there's so much, man. It, it's hard to get your head around Bitcoin. You know, I, I, that's partially why I'm doing these videos. I'm on like, I think it's going to be like episode 77 is like Bitcoin at the end of the day, we can talk about it. And I can definitely explain things like, you know, hash functions and all that and elliptic curves. And I, I can geek out on that stuff. I love that stuff. But I've come to the realization that Bitcoin is really a function of like the stories and the people that have decided like myself to devote our lives to this, you know, project, right. Which we think is, uh, is represents more than just like money or whatever. It's more like freedom and, and it's like philosophical and it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's apolitical. It's also like about financial freedom, but also openness and like, just being able to like control your own money and have it be censorship resistant. And, you know, and it's like the whole project is open, right? Like, like, like Chris Anderson said, it's like, you know, like Bitcoin, I mean, what he was, I guess, trying to do or is, is attempting to do Bitcoin is kind of doing to money, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. eating it alive in real time. Um, super fascinating, man. Super fascinating. This, this, yeah, go ahead. Do you think, do you think like the stuff that happened with uh, GameStop is like, gonna drive like uh you saw, right elon musk started putting yeah, it in his yeah, uh yeah. his profile now i think a lot of millennium millennia the young younger people are waking up to the fact that you know the whole system is rigged from like every every element of it is rigged and and and, and if you really fall and you remember i used to do i used to work like i used to do finan finan financial services and all that i don't know if you remember but like before i even I started did, at yeah. Kwanzaa, i spent years actually in a while i was even there and uh always had this like kind of deep quest to try and understand money because I feel like it's like kind of the source of, you know, happiness and sadness and wars. And, you know, it's like, it's just such a pivotal part of humanity. But the more I ask questions around it, the funnier the answers are like, what pieces of paper with people's faces on it? Like, we're going to all literally work all day and night for that. Like, what is it? Like, what mm -hmm. is it? Like, you know, religion, politics, skin color, music, food, everything changes from country to country, but everybody is kind of after this one thing, which is money. And then you learn about gold, how it's, you know, uh, essentially, you know, it's like, it, like you don't need to have governments to do, to do money is also, I think, you know, it was kind of an aha moment. When I moved to India, I was pretty taken aback by how, how, you know, how people are so into gold, right? Like speculative assets, like why would people even do that? But that started getting me at asking those questions even more deeply, which is, you know, what is, uh, what is money? You know, what are the, what is the history of money? What is the future of money? And uh, like trying to understand it from like first principles, you know, like not not just like trying to project my view of what money is, what I think it is, but like trying to really understand it from the. I think that's when you look at it through that lens. Yeah, the nonce and the hash, those are important, but you start to think like, wait, what is money? Oh, it's something that's fungible and divisible and scarce. And there's like these qualities, like seven or eight qualities that money should have. And then when you reverse look at Bitcoin from that lens, you're like, wait, but it's actually better than gold because I can zap it across planet Earth. And you know what I mean? There's all these like things that are just better and it's truly scarce. Whereas gold, oh, tomorrow they find some temple under India with a uh, hundred tons of gold or they, Elon Musk takes down a, a comet and uh, we can now take gold out of the sky or out of the, you know, out of space. It's like, it's not really scarce. Th th that was the uh, Peter Diamandis. No, was it Peter Diamandis? Yeah, he was talking about like um, the mining... Um the uh, interest uh, com comet no no not comet mining but yeah yeah basically interstellar mining <laughs> like yeah. being able to uh to go to uh you know go, go to orbiting you know comets and and mine them for uh oh sorry asteroids is it i always forget the terms for it it doesn't hit earth but it's orbiting around us so yeah comet. yeah it's a comet. yeah about? yeah Yes. Leor, um, I was going to say, man, this has been like, this has been pretty fun, man, going down memory lane. And uh, yeah, I didn't realize there was so many like little nuggets, you know, that, that, um, oh man. So you've been, you've been, you've been great, dude. What, uh, where do people tap into your consciousness? Like, uh, do you tweet? Uh, is it mostly like medium posts? I see you do medium posts. Like where do I people, to, yeah. 
I haven't been doing it every day, but I try to do it every day. Um, medium.com slash at Grebler. So that's my, that's my meeting page. And that's, I think probably the, the best place to find out more about me and my thoughts. And uh, occasionally I put Bitcoin stuff up there too. Some, some ideas like the Grey Goo one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But dude, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm getting a lot of interest uh, just on a personal note around robotics and you know the stuff we used to do so and i think it's becoming more relevant too in the world we live in um so i don't know maybe we bring on like myar and some of these old guys and do do like another or another show one of these days that'll be fun <laughs> oh yeah yeah talk about some of the crazy boston dynamics dancing robot stuff what that means yeah were you ever in their lab because like, no, no you were in the west so that's maybe Alyssa. oh i been. never i never i never got no i never got to uh but I did visit some Sanford had some pretty interesting mm. stuff with the, the gecko sticky gecko pads and things like that. So yeah, there's, yeah. there's some crazy labs on the, on the West coast that I had a chance to visit. So yeah, we've seen some wild things, man. We see some wild things. Okay. Lior, thanks, man. Just stick around for like three seconds. I'm going to sure. kill this video here and then.